Hello and welcome. Welcome to our second uh, Puzzler episode. Uh, that word chat, the Puzzlers, it was very successful last year. Uh, it's a little bit different. We're not talking to one person, but we're talking to a whole bunch of people uh, from the Incubator, uh, which is a website, a subscription website where you can get uh, puzzles made by um, people who you may not see um, making puzzles as much as perhaps we would like in a male-dominated field of puzzling. Um, but we have, uh, we're excited to uh, um, test your minds and get you involved and let you buzz in and, and participate in this one. Um, so we're, we'll, we've got a lot to do. We'll try to get it done in an hour, but you know, if you got something planned uh, after an hour, call and cancel right now because you never know. This could go on all night. Uh, so our puzzlers today, our puzzle creators are um, Katya Brink, Allegra Cooney, Jess Goldstein, and Kiara Vasquez, and they're all from the Incubator. And we have the we're going to start talking to the co-founder of the Incubator, Laura Bronstein. Uh, so Laura, welcome to the show. Nice to see you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Um, so tell us, can you, uh, in a nutshell, what is the Incubator and uh, and how did it get started? Uh, the Incubator is an indie puzzle outlet. And by indie, that means that we are not owned by any large media conglomerate like Condé Nast mm -hmm. or the New York Times. Um, mm -hmm. And we started via Kickstarter uh, back in 2018. And we have been published since publishing since January 2019. Um, and we publish puzzles by women and non-binary people. Mm -hmm. OK. And what's the reason for that? Um, well, the year um, that we started our Kickstarter, um, well, in, in uh, 2017 and 2018 was the lowest um, uh, percentage of women constructors in the New York Times, for instance. Um, mm. We kind of see the New York Times a little bit as kind of the bellwether for the industry. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and um, and we, uh, Tracy Bennett, who is the other co-founder and I, um, had thought about starting a new puzzle blog um, of women constructors. There had been other projects like Women of Letters, which was um, an all women pro constructor project. There was Queer Crosswords. Both of those projects um, were raised an enor a fantastic amount of money for, um, for women oriented and queer charities. Um, we wanted to start a outlet that um, published regularly and also paid people. Hmm. And um, and so um, we knew that we had to do some management as far as, you know, thinking about this as an ongoing business and what that would take. Um, and um, because we, you know, we wanted to support uh, women uh, constructors um, and also help new constructors learn. Uh, but we also felt that it was the that, uh, founding principle was that we should always pay people for their work. So, uh, right. So, um, so has it been successful? You have, a, it, it, there's a long list of people involved. Yes. So we have, we've published, um, I think we've got our 109th, um, or 108th puzzle, I think is going to be published on mm. Thursday. Mm. Um, and, uh, we have a book coming out with Andrews McNeil, oh. um, in April. Um, that has 75 of our first uh, published puzzles plus 25 brand new puzzles. I can put a link in the chat for folks. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and yeah, I think we've we've published something like um, 30 brand new constructors who we've mentored. Um, we've published uh -huh. everyone from teenagers to grandmothers um, and everyone in between. Mm -hmm. Is there, a, is there an advocacy role, I mean, just by highlighting um, women and uh, non-binary puzzle constructors? Or has the New York Times taken notice? Has Will Short's been uh, opened up the gates a little bit? Um, well, I think one of the things you find, I don't know, I don't know how much it's Will or if it's the team that has kind of grown up around Will. Um, so mm -hmm. you now have uh, Everdeen Mason, who is a black woman who is director mm -hmm. of puzzles and games now at the New York Times. Um, Wina Lou and Tracy Bennett um, are now um, associate puzzle editors. Tracy is the other co-founder oh, of the incubator. Yeah. Wina is another one of our um, of our of our constructors. Um, you know, I think 
um, you know, one of the things, the, the thing about change, about making change, uh, the question always is, do you try to infiltrate the mainstream or do you go off on your own? And I think we've kind of done both. Yeah. Oh, good. So, you, and, you, and I imagine you've had some, well, I don't know, I, 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 sometimes I, I make assumptions and I shouldn't, but have you had some uh, puzzle constructors who you sort of mentored and, um, I mean, it's called the incubator yeah. uh, with a K. Um, so have you had some uh, people go on to, to publish in uh, more mainstream? Yes, uh, we definitely places? have. We definitely mm -hmm. have. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's just there's really just been um, a wonderful, I think, um, expansion of the puzzle making community in the past five years or so. Um, mm -hmm. And we're just really proud to be part of uh, that opening up that's happened. Yeah, terrific. Um, and you, you've been published, you're, uh, you're a puzzle creator, but you're a librarian, is your day job? Yes, I, um, in my day job, I, um, I'm at Dartmouth College and I'm one of the co-heads of our digital library. So what we do mm -hmm. is we publish, uh, we digitize unique items from our collection to make available for the whole world. Oh, excellent, okay, yeah. My, my daughter does, uh, is, a young librarian in the same uh, area, so. Um, oh, fantastic. So, oh, yeah, we'll connect you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, and I see, you, so you're, um, it, what, you're, you mentioned Women of Letters and you're, mm -hmm. you've been published in Women of Letters and um, what's the American Values Club crossword? Right, so that is sort of our, we call that our sibling pub publication. We've kind of was spun off from them. So I don't know if you remember there was, um, but, or if you're, if folks are familiar with the, the publication, the, uh, the satirical publication, The Onion, The Onion has sure. a kind of arts and culture review section called the AV Club. Um, sure. And then for many years uh, in the early 2000s, um, in the early 2000s, <clears throat> the AV Club published a crossword that was edited by Ben Tausig. And then uh, when the AV Club decided that it didn't want to um, publish a crossword anymore, I think this is when it, they started, stopped publishing a print edition, um, mm -hmm. Ben Tausig took, you know, continued with the name or the acronym um, and called it the American Values Club. And it's one of the, the biggest, oh. <laughs> I think, indie, um, in the outfits right now um and it is sort of um it is collectively edited and um i'll also just put a put in a a plug that they have a kickstarter right now out because they're expanding um i believe kiara who is um who is on the panel tonight um is a big part mm -hmm. of that um and um and so that's another exciting way in which uh the indie world is expanding mm -hmm. okay well, great um and i and i and I should, uh, I, we should move on before we run, uh, before we um, push things too late. It's been wonderful talking to you, and I'm hoping you stick around. And in case we need a judge, an impartial I'm judge. I'm happy to judge. To, yes. Okay, <laughs> I might be good. partial, though. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's we don't honestly. The whole partiality thing is just something we say for lip service. Um, you know, mm -hmm. there's no, uh, there's no hint that this will be a fair contest. Um, so, uh, so our first, um, I think we're starting with uh, Jess Goldstein is our first puzzle creator, um, uh, a math teacher. And uh, I don't think there's going to be any math involved in today's puzzle, but Jess, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm very yeah. excited. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're kind of the guinea pig too, because this is a little complicated. Yeah. It's audience participation. Everybody gets to buzz in. Um, and uh, answer, but not necessarily at, I mean, at certain times. The main thing we want is don't like shout out answers or um, answer in the room where everybody can see, because we, um, we're, when we do need a, a single answer, we're gonna ask you to type buzz. You can copy and paste, you can capitalize it or not, we don't care. Exclamation point at the end won't give you any extra points. Um, but type buzz in the room, and the first person to type buzz, that is the person who gets to answer. But um, but your but Jess, your uh, your puzzle is a little bit complicated in that it's like there's many moving parts, right? So maybe explain. It's that a multi-step puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, 
when Allegra reached out to me about this show, I thought, because I've never, I've been writing crossword puzzles for about two years, but I've never written mm. any other kind of puzzle, except oh. for the math problems I make up every day, yeah. um, but never anything this complicated. So I thought of a crossword puzzle I wrote a while ago in which I took the awful hashtag not all men and I changed it to all not men. So a little bit of maybe a tagline for the incubator. Um, uh -huh. So the theme of this <laughs> is all not men and it is a musical crossword and I'm gonna share a screen. Okay. It's a musical puzzle, it's not a crossword. Right. And please be patient with how slow my work computer is. Um, so I took songs that had the word man in them, of which there are many, and I replaced each song, each of the word man with a rhyming word. So um, we'll go through an example. I had many mm -hmm. left over that didn't fit in the crossword puzzle because um, I needed to pay attention to the symmetry, and I think I had no more than five. So these are the leftovers that didn't quite make the cut. And then to make it a little bit more fun, I also made, uh, there's a special type of name for this puzzle, but there are visual cues that we will, as a group, um, try to identify what are these pictures of. And we will take those letters, unscramble them, make the band or artist, and then do the title of the song. Okay. So the way that'll work, we'll go through a, the practice one as a whole group. The way that'll work, and you'll get one point for the artist name and one point for the song title. So this is our example one. And for all of these rounds, I would actually like everybody or all participants to type in the chat if they can come up with the letters that these images describe. So okay. we can do this as a practice. So feel free to just well, go ahead and type. Go ahead nope. and type in Mark, the room. Is that not I... right? Pardon? Yeah, go ahead and type. And I, I okay. no, I was just going to say, uh, the th middle one must be bats. It's bats. Okay, not too hard We've at all. We've got hack, we've got bats. And it's not talks. This last one is kind of hard, and that's why I kept it as a example. Um, it's not chat, chat, it's not talk. Uh, uh, it's uh, not, think, think more like gossip or keep talking. Blab, dish. thanks, Allegra. Okay, so oh, it is hack, Wait, bats, Did Allegra and know that? And okay. Sorry. I don't think so. I think she's just really good. <laughs> All right. Um, and so now, this would be where we would buzz, but we're just practicing right now. At mm. this point, we want to come up with the name of a musical artist or group, and Kevin's already got it. Um, mm. Black Sabbath. I think in the future, Mark, if I'm not wrong, we want to do the buzz thing, and then I call on someone. Yes, yes. Okay, so, great. Right. But Kevin but would get this a, point anyways. This is just um, the... Uh... And now that we know that it's Black Sabbath, we are going to come up with a song about a sturdy kitchen item. Mm. And again, the gimmick is so, all not men. I have replaced the word man oh, in right. the song. And is that the album it's from? That is, uh, Laura's suggestion last night, all of the, I have the photos of the albums as well. So Kevin's buzzing mm. again. Yes. I am Kevin, it's out. just a sample, but Kevin, why don't you cut? Why don't you unmute and give us your answer here? Uh, hello. It looks like uh, Kate uh, got the one. Got it too. That was the one. Oh. Iron Pan. Or Iron Kate Pan. Unroll, uh, yeah. So it's Iron Pan. Great. <laughs> okay, Kate. Okay. Um, All right. So I think we get it. But I have I have one question. So um, if it's a two parter. And somebody buzzes in. Does somebody else buzz in for the second part, or honestly, up to you? I I I had said one point for each, but so I would. Yeah. Okay. Think yeah. So we can. I think yes, you can have two different people. It's two different people. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Why not? Makes it a little, um, makes it a little interesting. Works for right. me. So right. how do you okay. choose the three contestants? Uh, most points after three rounds, which oh, means right. somebody's and got to answer twice. Buzz? Anybody Anyone can buzz. buzz. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All now right. Then. I think we're. Um, I think we're ready. Get ready to buzz. Well, was for this. So this one we're not buzzing. Anyone can just type in the letters. We're coming up with this one together. Right. right. We're all on a team right now. 
All right, so answer in the room. Well, I have no idea what that first thing is. That's I don't bizarre. either. I Googled oh, it. Bar. It's from maybe Spider-Man. It's oh. definitely a bar. We've got the middle one is a bar. Okay, I'm just going to do the middle ones. It's not Venom, unfortunately. I don't know who that is either, and I don't know this guy, but I Googled <laughs> it. Alien? I agree with everyone that we've got bar. Really? The third one, it's the lapel, no lapel. Um, um, Chris is buzzing. Chris, you can just type whatever the words are if you know them. Um, yes, Kimmy, who's my sister, I didn't know was here. I got not for the last <laughs> one. Excellent. Okay. And the first one, I'm just going to start putting in some letters. Uh -huh. T. Yeah. That's an N. Titan. It's not Titan. Don't know. It's toxin. toxin. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin. You know, I don't know who this is either. It's the first thing that came up when I Googled it. I was like, maybe <laughs> people know it. I believe it's from Spider-Man. Okay. Okay. So now we've got those. Now you may buzz in for the musical artist or group. All right. Remember, don't say the name, but just type buzz when you've got the artist. And these are all pop, rock, modern all over Artists. honestly um okay. they're not classical i don't think there's any classical or country paula's buzzing in go for it paula is it tony braxton it's tony braxton okay point for oh, paula. Excellent. whoever is keeping track of points give paula a point All okay right. it's tony braxton yeah. and, and the song is about a guy who spent too much time indoors I think I've got it, but I'm biting my tongue. Are you uh, allowed to was, buzz in? No, no, I'm not. But, but oh, okay. Kate Unrow is, oh. uh, has oh, buzzed in. Yeah, Kate did. Okay. Go for it, Kate. He wasn't tan enough? He wasn't tan enough. Yeah. Too much SPF, too much time indoors. <laughs> okay. So All Paula right. has one and Kate has one. All right. And we're ready for the next one? I'm ready. Cool. Great. Awesome. Okay. Also, the difficulty range is quite um, oh, there's... chaotic and all over the place. Cool. We've got six and pi. Six and yep, pi. it is six oh, and pi. Easy. And okay. Kevin is also buzzing for the name. Kevin's already got the name. Go for it, Kevin. Excellent. Yep, he already said it. Okay. Actually, yeah. Um, Kevin's got so a point for pixies. Kevin's, Kevin's got pixies. And this song is about getting picked up from soccer practice. And Kate, Kate is again. buzzing again. Here comes your van. Here comes your van. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> Kate's got two points. Excellent, Kate. Okay. All right. We're getting the hang of it. Cool. And I just learned how to make, how to not scroll on my. Okay. Here oh, we go. Another okay. one. We can all come up with this one together. I, I'm really just impressed that you're writing the, the letters in that this. That's why we have a teacher go first, right? That's well, I, well, I taught remote, learned remote and... learning. Yeah. It's my, my whiteboard. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got to figure um, that out. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, everyone's already got it. Planet Spa. This is hmm. This is the plan. Oh, yeah, Planet Spa. And feel free to buzz in if you've got the artist. Kate is buzzing again. Go for it, Kate. Okay. Salt and pepper. Absolutely. Okay. Three points for Kate. Wow. Um, okay. And this song by Salt and Peppa is about an outlawed book. And Kate mm. is buzzing because she's got the song too. <laughs> yeah. Is it What a Ban? It's what a band. Yep. 
Four points for Kate. All right. Okay, so this next one, we can come up with it together. Yep, Karen's got Rifle and Ark, and Allegra's got Nathan. Yeah, this is hmm. Nathan, Rifle, and Ark. And buzz in if you want to unscramble hmm. it. Pam Eitzen's wondering who um, is Nathan's Nathan. from a show, Nathan, for you. It's on HBO or maybe Hulu. It's pretty funny. <laughs> He's a comedian. Yeah, there we go. I just no started watching yet. it, and I thought it was good. No buzzes yet to unscramble. So do we have a clue, maybe? A hint? A genre? First letter is an A. The clue is you all know who this person is. This is not a <laughs> this is not a indie band deep cut. Everyone's gonna go, oh. Okay. Okay. Uh Patty said it. So, yeah, Patty said it. Patty did not follow the rules when Patty was here a year ago, but <laughs> I think we need to give it to her. Uh, yeah, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. Remember, remember to buzz. Okay, so Aretha Franklin's song is about preferring glass to aluminum. Kate's buzzing. Kate, do so, you have an answer? Okay. Oh, she's bowing out for someone else. So Dana just got yeah. here. Dana, come on off mute and tell us the song. Never mind. <laughs> Dana came up with a song, but it wasn't an Aretha Franklin song. I think, Kate, you've got to just, just go for the points. Just hoard the points. Yeah, I'm already giving her the fifth point yeah. right now. So yeah. I never loved should... a can. I never loved a can. Exactly. <laughs> all right kate's like on my same wavelength i love this all right great let's let's get it let's get a point update uh if we can okay. we know kate's paula got like a hundred it's got five paula has one oh. kevin has one and patty has one okay according to my post-it okay if anyone whoever my backup is yeah he great heather's keeping heather's keeping the official track but i'm sure oh, it's the same Oh, no, don't trust me. I'm not a computer. I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> yeah. Karen um, says, trust trust the math teacher in chat. I know. <laughs> yeah, I've got the chat up okay. here, and uh, I don't know if I would trust me. Okay. I don't know how many more we have, but we're like halfway through my slideshow. So okay. here's the next one. Okay, we've got Anklet. We've got Ash and Dig. Yep, that is it. We worked together, and we came up with Anklet, Ash, and Dig. So now, let's unscramble. I'm having trouble remembering this one. <laughs> I hope one of you comes up with it. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to look at my... Um... Yeah. Can you do that without showing it? Shocker I don't. We're going to find out. No. Remember to buzz at this point, folks. Buzz when you know it. Do you all see my email or just the PowerPoint? No, just the PowerPoint. Fabulous. Then I can look up a clue. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot my own. Oh, Karen's buzzing. Okay, Karen, save me. <laughs> Talking heads. Yes. Okay. Of course. I knew this. Yeah. I wrote this. Karen's <laughs> got it. A point for Karen. Thank you for saving the day. Talking heads. And they wrote a new song about paying for cable. Hmm. This one's a struggle. Uh, Melissa is buzzing. Uh, Melissa. Unmute and... Is that... Television man? Um, yes, we've got to change the word man. Oh. Uh... Pain for cable. Uh... I'm, I'm trying to think because I haven't done that in probably 
eight years. <laughs> well, da Dana's I think I know it. Well. It rhymes. It it rhymes with man, though, right? We're looking for something that rhymes with man. So we'll give you three seconds, and then we'll have to go to Dana. Okay, uh, Dana, can you help out? Is it television plan? It is television plan. Okay, and uh, and Heather, can you tell us who has points at this point? Yes, Paula, Kate, Kevin, Patty, Karen, Melissa, and Dana are our well, stars. That's a lot. Well, yes, people are are yes, they're spectacularly fantastic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do, uh, we'll do one more round just with those people. So everybody else, uh, keep your fingers off the, off the keyboard and because uh, we need to find a winner. Actually, okay. Oh, wait, we only need one winner. What am I talking about? We only need one winner to go forward. Oh, well, I've got one more anyway. It's not this one. This <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm overthinking. I was thinking we need multiple winners to go forward, but of course we only need the one. I think we have that. But okay, let's do let's do one more. And I'm sorry, everybody can yeah, everybody let's see can if Kate jump in. Can crush everyone here as well. Yeah. Um, okay. This is just two words. Yep, Kate's got ransom and ransom. Goo, it's not goo, it's not, oh, Kevin's got it, it's rub. <laughs> yep, that person is doing a dry rub on some meat, I believe. Ah, okay, so, so it is Ransom and, and rub. rub. And what band is that? Guess? And it looks like I forgot the, um, this is the hardest one, because I forgot oh. the um, enumeration oh. for. Oh, do you remember, do you remember how you many words? I'll tell you, it's two words. It's two okay. words. One person, two Bu words. Buzz in if you know it. Probably the most recent one on here. Hmm. Look at that whiteboard magic. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Dana. Dana. Since apparently I can't type, uh, Bruno Mars. <laughs> Bruno Mars. Yep. Bruno another point Mars. for Dana. Okay. You know, I liked this, um, this, these pictures, but I actually don't love the song one I came up with for this one. So I apologize to everyone. This is like my, <laughs> I picked my least favorite one. It's a song about getting <laughs> over a, a band and Kate, Kate knows what it was. When I was your fan. When I was your fan. Oops. And the handlebars are for Allman Brothers. That is a last minute addition that I guess we're not going to do. So, um, <laughs> yes, this should say when I was your fan right here and the handlebars should not be there. Um, but okay. what a great note to end on. <laughs> yes, that was wonderful. I was, it went, I'm sorry it went so long, but, um, oh, and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't talk about the prizes along the way. Kate, you have already won uh, that word chat coffee mug. So congratulations to Kate and Kate is in our, goes on to our final round, um, which at this point may not be until, um, you know, after the evening news, but um, hopefully we'll, we'll speed along with the next one. So Jessica, thank you very much. That was wonderful. That was tons of fun and uh, great, um, great getting everybody involved. So um, next up, uh, uh, we're, I think we're going to Allegra next, right? Allegra Cooney. Um, who was on the show last year. So uh, you saw her do uh, puzzles involving spoonerisms last year. And uh, she writes for Beyond Wordplay, um, which is a great puzzle site. And Wordnik, one of our, we had, uh, we had Aaron McKeon, uh, founder of Wordnik on not too long ago, um, talking about that online dictionary. So Allegra, nice to see you again. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Great background there. Nice kitchen you have. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what's, uh, what puzzle are, are we doing today? Right. Well, I will share my screen. And, um, can everyone see? Yes. Yeah, your, your sound's a little, um, a little muffled. Oh. Hmm. But 
um, I don't know if there's something simple, but I will talk we, more loudly, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not muffled. It sounds like it's maybe a bad connection. So we'll just have to. Uh, Amazon Web Services is having trouble today, so that may be to blame. But I apologize. I will try to enunciate as best as possible. And in any case, all the information should be on screen. So great. Okay, so this is called the future HTML, and the idea is uh, that it is a type of um, it is a type of wordplay called a false edition, and specifically, this is what we call a false semi. Uh, which means modifying a word so that it ends in ESS, as in uh, the female version of Mr. is a mistress, the female version mm -hmm. of a tiger is a tigress, uh, the female version of butter is not buttress, uh, but isn't it fun to think if it were? Uh, so this game will evolve. Um, the answers will be pairs of words, uh, one without ESS at the end and one with. And sometimes the spelling will change. Um, so that the last vowel will be removed as in this. Well, I'll show you an example. Here's the first example. Uh, we have these little, little poems. So this is uh, a Swiss town known for fairs of art on the Rhine, at least in part, is slandered, libeled, and attacked by accusations without. Um, I'm not sure how, to, how I can do the cat and the, have it at the same time. So can someone else? Uh, manage the chat for me oh yeah absolutely um yeah so this poem uh the, the first two lines tell you the um the word without ess and then the second two lines tell you what it is with you so this one does anyone know it a swiss town known for fairs of art and it's a lovely it's a poem Oh, it looks like uh, Elizabeth has answered. Uh, yes, Basil and yeah. Basil. How you pronounce it? And Baseless. Basil, uh, which is the kind of brilliant art Basel, which is the art named after it, and Baseless. Uh, so this doesn't really have anything to do with with uh, women or gender. You know, it's it's, it's only nominally, but still. Um, yeah, um, but it's important to know. I just want to note that sometimes the original word will be condensed. Uh, again, like Mr. Mistress. Um, so right. that's all will be taken out. Okay. We don't okay. say Mr. Ress. Okay. Mr. Ress, I suppose yeah. you could, but yeah, no, we don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be like the first, um, the first three questions are going to be to choose the contestants, and then there's going to mm -hmm. be a couple of six more questions um, okay. for only those three people. Great. Uh, and you buzz in by saying buzz, and then right. they'll call on you, and you'll get the answer. Yeah, OK. So here we go. Uh, question one. A slippery fish, an eel, in fact, decides now is the time to act. In politics, he'll now compete and run for <laughs> US Senate seat. A slippery fish, an eel, in fact. So an eel running for the Senate. We're looking for two words. The second word ends in ESS. Oh, and Paula, looks like Paula has, uh, has buzzed. Okay. Paula, would you like to unmute and give us your, your guess at that? Um, is it Conga and Congress? Yes, it is. Okay, so Paula will be our first contestant. Ah, excellent. Congratulations, to Paula. Okay. So for the yeah, conger or con I think it's conger actually, conger eel. Conger. Hmm. Yeah, conger would be congress. Okay. Here is the next one. A player for the Brooklyn Nets, the Brooklyn, is weird as he stops mid-game before our eyes. He picks up and helps. Him. If you know who the, the basketball player is. Stiffens up and calcifies. What a great poem. <laughs> Thank you. I wrote it myself. Uh, Kate has buzzed. Yes, Kate. Is it Harden and Hardness? Yes, it is. Yeah. 
So I, I hate to do this. I hate to kind of keep throwing the wrench in, but Kate, because you've already, you're already one of our finalists, um, it doesn't make sense for you to win, uh, to be, <laughs> to be, um, to go on to the next round because you can't go on twice. Um, so, so I, I think, uh, probably Kate, if you lay low, that would be good. And we'll bring you back for the final. Sorry, I should have, I actually thought about that and I, and I didn't say it at the beginning. So my fault. Harden. Yeah. Harden hardness. Kate is just like, I mean, we should just give her the final prize for all that she's okay. gotten uh, so far. A movie star of Fiddler fame, known to mm -hmm. most by his last name, in a manner most overt, he stands up and removes his shirt. <laughs> Again, if you're familiar with Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, Melissa Hellman has buzzed. All right. Three people buzzed. Mm -hmm. Melissa, are you uh, able to answer? Yep, I'm, I'm here. So the, the movie star is Chaim Topol, and mm -hmm. the uh, answer is uh, Topless. Yes, Topol, Topless. What, a, what an image to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should we do one more then to... to, to uh, I think so, yeah, I think so. Okay, so this one, again, we're looking for someone to buzz in and compete for the rest of the questions. Here's question four. A common snake with venomous bite most oddly learns to read and write, and with his notes within Kale's reach, he slithers on stage to give a speech. Uh, we have a buzz from Karen. Karen Horler. Hi. Um, adder and address? That's right. Adder, address. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. So we have now we have our three. All right. So who do we have? Who do we have, Heather? We have Paula, Melissa, and Karen. Awesome. Okay. okay. So the next, I think that there are five questions. So I think that the next one will be limited to those three to see who goes on to the final. So if you're not Paula, Melissa, or Karen, uh, don't buzz in as much as you might like to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next question. It's a football one. In football once, he made his name on field and screen and video game. But through the years, the stress and strain has made him crazed and quite insane. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Melissa. Uh, Madden and Madness. Yes, John Madden, the uh, uh, football announcer turned uh, video game mogul, uh, and Madness. All right, awesome. Yes. Okay. Six. Okay, one point for Melissa. Awesome. Question six. I used to take an evening meal, some soup, a salad, no big deal. But now I hold it back each night. I've learned to quell my appetite. Hmm. And uh, Melissa buzzed again. Amy said, got it. Um, oh, is Amy not? Uh, not in the not final. A finalist. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's Melissa again. Uh, supper and suppress. That's right, yeah. supper, supper S. Last supper. All right, two points for Ooh, Melissa. Uh, any more questions left? So we can see, catch up. Get out of my dreams and into this. To go for a ride is utter bliss. I love my vehicle so much. What need do I have for a gentle touch? And Paula already buzzed. All right. Um, car and caress. That's right. Car and a female mm. car. There's a car S. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not the right picture. Sorry. <laughs> that was the default picture on uh, uh, car. Okay. You can imagine, you know, <laughs> okay. All right, two more <laughs> questions. Uh, in solid, liquid form, or gas, if any substance that has mass, it's in everything except sound or light, including the thing I sleep on at night. Okay, there are several buzzes, and I don't know if Paula was from the last time or I, I think it's from Paula. This time. 
All right. Um, matter and mattress. Yes, matter and mattress. Oh my goodness. So we have two and two, correct? Oh, okay. This, yeah, this could be, I, I don't have a tiebreaker question, so. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> then, then I, then in fair, then just to make sure, make it, just no, to mean, do it the right way, then we should yeah, just limit it to those two people. There's one more. Okay. Sorry? Okay. It's a sudden death between Paula and Melissa. Okay. Right. Right. So just it. Paula and Melissa. Okay. He's known for his incompleteness theorem. When it comes to logic, no one else comes near him. And though his faith was once quite prodigious, he's turned atheistic and quite irreligious. And uh, we have a buzz from Melissa. All right. That would be Gödel and Godless. That's right. That's Kurt. Gödel. Oh, I forgot the the uh, the two dots above the O. Yeah, Kurt Gödel, the famous logician. Uh, God, although I think in life he was actually a, a fairly devout uh, Christian, but for, for the purposes of this game, yes, Gödel and <laughs> awesome. Okay, great. So we have a winner. So we, right? so we have a winner, Melissa. Hooray! And you'll be getting a that word chat mug, and uh, and we'll 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 we're running way over time, so we'll have to we'll move along quickly. Thank you so much, Allegra. That was fantastic. Okay, bye. And uh, uh, next up, we have Katja, Katia. Hello. <laughs> uh, Katia Brink. Um, and uh, you, you've you also, you wrote, I, I read the article, you wrote about uh, long German words. Oh, yes. Uh, you, yes, <laughs> and for Beyond Word Play, mm -hmm. so you're also involved in that uh, Beyond Word Play. It's a great website of um, stuff for the puzzle-minded. And, uh, and you also do... Uh, Classical piano is mm -hmm. um, on your bio, so and you're going to yes. do some some classical puzzle stuff for us. Yes, so I'm a huge classical music fan. Um, my puzzle oh. is a little similar to Jess's in that it's taking some visuals to come up with words that anagram to famous composers, and then I have some audio clues in there. So I think what we'll do is. Um, Take the first three questions, and whoever can figure out the composer, they get to be in the final round, and then we have a few questions after that. Um, so we'll see if there's any hidden classical music people in the group. Um, right. So I will go ahead and share my screen. And let me get to my slideshow. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling this Classical Arrangements. And so this is just my example. Um, and I know since we're a little short for time, I'll just kind of walk through how this would work. So mm -hmm. I have three pictures. Um, so this one would be Cobra Legend Horns, um, which is kind of an awesome anagram. Cobra um, Legend is held uh, horn, OK. Yep. And then this anagrams to a composer, which is six letters, 10 letters. I use this one because I thought this composer was a little harder to get. And that is Arnold. Schoenberg. And um, mm. so that's kind of how we're going to go through it. So I think what we'll okay. do is we can sort of talk through the pictures. But if anyone actually figures out the composer, type in buzz. Um, and I'll have a little audio clue in there as well for not quite all of them, but for the ones that I could do. And okay. um, yeah, so, and then so, any, yeah. So go we ahead. can talk, we can, we can type to help unscramble the words. Correct. Uh, help us there. And then when you but when you have the uh, composer type buzz. Correct. Got it. All right. So this one, um, we have three pictures, um, a 10 letter, a five letter, a three letter. The first picture mm -hmm. is a little hard. It's not a parabola. Elizabeth, I see I is correct Elizabeth with, got it. Yeah. with wavelength. And bun is correct on bun. the end. And let's see, okay. and video is right. So those Excellent. are the words. So now's your opportunity to buzz in. Unscramble those words and unscramble for composer. this composer. And I'm gonna add my little audio clue, which should probably give it away on this one, maybe. Yes. And I think Karen has already buzzed before the audio. Okay. So you get bonus points. Oop, mm -hmm. I should have not done that yet. What's the answer, Karen? <laughs> uh, even without the photo, I think it was Ludwig von Beethoven. Correct. Excellent. So that's kind of a fun anagram. 
Um, all, right. all right, so here's the second one to get our second contestant. So this one has a few more words involved. Wow. And so Green. maybe just, so this one, the first one's a two letter word. Go, um, oh, go. go. Go is correct. Foam is correct. I see that in the chat. At is correct. Daddy? So we have go foam at. This one's a little harder. Um, it's an eight letter word. Hmm. And it describes what kind of material the pots are made out of. Oh. <laughs> oh, and Amy Goldstein, oh. I see, has the composer. Yes. Should, I'll so, just finish out um, the anagram and get the audio so everyone can enjoy it for a second. All right. All right. And then I Amy? guess it's Amy. Yeah. Hello. Am I there? Uh, yes, you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. That's a little loud. Oh. <laughs> we can't hear you, though. <laughs> you have to shout. <laughs> no, we can't hear you. It's just the music was so loud. I made the music too loud. <laughs> it is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Correct. Excellent. There we go. All right. So Amy is one of the contestants for the final. So here's our last question to get a finalist. So we've banana. got four words here. So yeah, banana is correct. Has oh, mean. is correct. Oh, it's yeah. actually oh, has. It's I crossed kind of, out. Right. right. Shin is correct. This one maybe is a little hard. It's the action this person is taking in a courtroom. Object. So object, exactly. Oh, and I my screen might get cut off. So banana object has shin anagrams to this composer. Buzz in. Oh. Oops, sorry. There we go. Paula Clark was first. Uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. Very correct. <laughs> okay, so we have three finalists. Um, yeah, Excellent. so I have seven more to go through. Um, they will get a little bit harder, I think, as far as the composers go. Okay. Um, and uh, and who are, our, uh, Heather, who are the three finalists? Our three finalists are Karen, Amy, and Paula. All right. Perfect. So only Karen, Amy, and Paula are answering. Perfect. All right. So we're going to go on to the next one. Um, yeah, I think that's fine if everyone plays along for the word part and then the okay. buzz will be from the three because i'm right. sure everyone needs help um because some some of these words the pictures it's a little hard to come up with honestly <laughs> yeah i got error but that doesn't not seven letters not error um it's this is a screenshot i could come up with for a url that was no good oh. seven letter word not unfound <laughs> and not quite applaud, but it's something people are doing what they're, I guess, what they're giving mm -hmm. as applauding. Pam Eitzen points out that 404 is the area code of Atlanta. Nice. Okay. Ovation but, is correct. Doesn't help. Okay. And I don't know if anyone can figure out the first one. So it's not legitimate. URL is my example. Um, uh scam mm -hmm. i could just it's not defunct sadly defunct. okay you better get you know what, we'll just yeah it's invalid so oh, invalid, invalid ovation anagrams to all a composer that is also seven seven so now we want all right. and it looks like paula buzzed in I paula think. has buzzed four seasons there oh. yes <laughs> um antonio vivaldi Correct. And that is possibly what Vivaldi looked like. Not 100% sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, next one, we have four right. words. So everyone can talk them out. Thy. Like, thy is correct. Um, this is the British spelling of something. Oh. <laughs> a feeling you might have, not a fire but maybe a sensation you might have in front of fire. Uh, Dane is correct with cozy. Oh. <laughs> uh, not pants. It's maybe the color of the pants. Khaki is correct. And then this is a word that was hard to draw. Um, it's <laughs> the devil a tendency to do something bad. 
and it's 10 letters. Uh, and it's not temptation. Temptation, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not that one, but... Um, And if no one gets it, I might just put this word on the screen because it's really about anagramming the composer. Mm. It proclivity. Proclivity, oh. All right, now we have the audio Pretty clue. Well. Oh, yes, the enumeration. Sorry. <laughs> And Paula has it. Is it Peter uh, Elievich Tchaikovsky? No. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elievich. Sure. And sometimes Peter, but often. Yeah, I don't know how you say it properly. Pyotr yeah. Elievich Tchaikovsky. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next one, oops, um, here uh, what, we go. What are, what are our points uh, at Oh, good, now, good question. Yeah. Paula is in the lead with two. All right. All right. So there's so, still a chance. <laughs> yes. All right, so here are the visuals. Everyone feels, uh, so I just see cheerleader, that is correct. Mm -hmm. It's not target, but it's the Action and dog is correct. Shooting, shooting, it's not shooting, uh, oh, but it's practice. close to that. Firing. Practice and firing. Okay. So cheerleader, yeah, firing fire. dog. And here's the enumerations for the composer. Paula again. Paula, you I look know, uh, unsure. Read, right, Georg Friedrich Handel. <laughs> Forget it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there you go. I, it, it's tricky that you have all three names. We all can come up with the last names very Right, quickly, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wasn't sure how this one was going to go. So I'm yeah. thrilled yeah. that people are getting some of it. This is maybe <laughs> one of my favorite ones. So kind of excited with this. Just the anagram named. Um, okay, so... Well, I gave it away there. Oops. Oh. If you didn't see saucy. it, yes, it's saucy. Oh. Bed is correct. F fence. It's not fence, Karen's but it's sort fence. of the action F oh, duel. Oh, yeah, fence duels. Scene? Oh, yeah. So saucy bed duels, and here's the okay. composer. And, oh, and Amy, Amy buzzed has in. already buzzed. Yeah. Okay, you guys ready? Ready. <laughs> Bob WC. Yes. I, I just love the image of a saucy bed duel. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So it's three and one, I believe. I think so. so. Amy, st Amy still has a chance to yes. steal it from Paula. Okay. And Karen has high organ. That is correct for the first two. And then this one. It's maybe a little difficult, um, so I'm happy to talk people through it. Um, a person that comes to your house to help you with something, not quite an installation. It's who the person is, not an installer. Oh. Service man is correct. Service man. So that anagrams to this composer who sometimes uses a different spelling. So this is sort of maybe the alternate spelling. Oh. We'll see if anyone knows this one. I'm watching Amy and Paul in particular. <laughs> see, neither of them are jumping at it. All right, I can give another hint. It's Russian, or he's he's Russian. Which I guess I just gave away. He's a he, <laughs> <laughs> which most of these are. And I'm going to guess nobody's going to know from the clue. I'll throw the picture up. That may not help mm -hmm. either. <laughs> Dana knows you can pay Dana. <laughs> yes, Kate agreed that phrase. Uh, is Amy. Different. Oh, Amy. Amy has a buzz. I'm mute. Sorry. Is that Sergei <laughs> Rachmaninoff? It is. 
Okay, so these, we've got four words here. Um, so elf is correct. Um, it's not actually bolt, it's the material of the bolt, neon. Somebody says neon, Heather. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anyone got the first one. Hymns is correct at the end. And sand, yep. So those are sand, elf, neon, hymns. Um, now this is a composer who is one of one of my female com or my one female composer. Oh, excellent! And so, so we it's don't a little hard to track down. You may not. <laughs> well, you'd probably know the last name. I can okay. give some oh. hints. She collaborated with her brother. Some of her compositions were actually published under his name because mm -hmm. being a female composer was not really acceptable. Oh, I think I saw Paula buzzed. Oh, Paula, yes. Yeah, I missed that. Um, Fanny Mendelssohn. Correct. Wonderful. So Sand Elf Neon Hymns, love that one. And so I have one final one that does not have an audio clue, but it's because it's slightly more recent. Um, but I think this is a great one. Here we go, it's a 610. Um, so it's not laptop. Bartender is correct, except there's two of them. So we're going to call that. And it's not bartenders. typing. It is bartenders. Um, the person who's typing, and it's something we all are right now. Karen is correct. Karen we are online. online. So online bartenders. Anagrams to this composer. Who perhaps has been kind of sideways uh, related to somebody that was in the news recently, or not related, connected to somebody in the news recently. Mm -hmm. Somebody who will continue to be in the news. Yes. And perhaps person. there's a movie coming out soon <laughs> that relates. <laughs> Amy buzzes. Amy. <laughs> Happy uh, to give hints. It's, it's Leonard Bernstein. It is. All right. Well, we have, I think we have a tie, don't we? Oh, no. Okay. No, I we still don't. have Paula with four and Amy with three. Oh, okay. oh, forgive me. Forgive me. Okay. Almost a so, tie. Almost a tie. Almost a tie. That's right. If they're an odd number, we only had two people. Weighing in. Well, that was that was exciting. Um, I, you know, I'm sorry we're going so late, but we have um, we have our three finalists, right? So uh, we have Paula with a that word chat mug. Congratulations! And who were who are our three finalists going for the the big prize? Kate and Melissa join Paula. Okay, so for this last. Uh, round, I think we're, I don't think we're going to have audience participation at all, if I'm not correct, if I'm uh, correct. Uh, so we'll just have our three finalists buzzing in. And I didn't, I haven't told you what the prizes are yet. You people don't even know what you're competing for, but um, there's, uh, I have three books uh, kindly donated by the, the publisher. This is uh, Alex Bellos has a new book, The Language Lover's Puzzle Book. Uh, this is just out, and uh, also when we asked for donations, they sent us two previous books. So these are all some terrific uh, puzzle books, and we'll send those to the winner of this final round. So uh, I, we're, next we have uh, Chiara, um, Chiara Vasquez, um, and coming to us from Brooklyn and... Uh, Tell us what you're going to be puzzling us on today. Oh, I, I used to live in Brooklyn. Now I, I live in a dark room on planet Mars, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I just went by your bio on... Uh, no, no. I, yeah. Yes. It's yeah, real, this is interesting. This is, this okay. is an interesting camera. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, okay. <laughs> so, well, my wonderful puzzle, um, we're going to be taking you composers... And then we're going to be replacing letters M A N in the entries with rhyming man words. Uh, no, we're not going to be doing that. We are going. <laughs> no, no, we're going to be. Yes, we're going to be. Yes, so it's called streaming error. 
it's like the streaming era, but error. Oh, damn it, we have a, a pre roll ads. Yes, this is brought to you by, <laughs> a, yes, the American Values Crossword Club. Ah, ah yes, um, AVCX, as it's called, which um, recently launched a Kickstarter, uh, I should specify, which I have been involved with for a while. And speaking of excellent indie services, uh, the incubator, you know, we have, you know I, I have a puzzle oh, the book. in this book. the book. Yes, yeah. yes, this book. Yes, I, I'm Excellent. happy to say I have a puzzle in the book. Um, so please buy it. What are we doing? Well, um, there's so much good television out there in the world these days. But, I mean, who has time to watch it all? There's there's so much of it. We're, we're in peak TV, as they say. So yeah. what I have done is I've watched every single one of these shows. Uh, well, I, I've watched every single one of these shows, but they've kind of um, got mixed up in my head. So <laughs> we're... So I, I'm sort of a little confused about what these shows are about. So I've just sort of tried to piece the, them together from the titles. So in this game, you're going to be buzzing in with the title of the television program that I have perhaps inaccurately represented the um, content of in the, based on its title. And I'll be doing so by misparsing the title. So for instance, we have um, an example here. Ah, uh, yes. An FX bio drama about, about the Italian playwright Dario, an accidental death of an anarchist and all that, uh, and his family. They all get together in a the guillotine, uh, a mafia <laughs> capo. Uh, I haven't have... seen this show. I yeah. don't know what the show is. Yeah. Yes, I have no idea what's that. Uh, I don't know if anyone wants to. I don't know if anyone can figure out what I'm going for with this. I so this is an example, so any, I think anybody yeah, can... Is, yes, anyone can figure this out, and you'll see. This is... I suspect that most of you won't because I rejected this one for being way too hard, but you'll understand in a minute that, well, the show in question, that's obviously the wonderful Foes Sever Dawn, shared on FX. And I will, um, if necessary, I will give you hints about both where this aired and what the title is via enumeration, if necessary. Okay. All right. So Foes Sever Dawn... And we have Fossi Verd Verd. How how do we get from Verd. one to the other? Well, you well if you look. These are it's all the letters. They're going to be in the same order, but uh, the enumeration is different between the two. There will be a. So it is. Oh, so it is. Okay. Foes, the foes severed on. That's what the show is about. I assume. I, I assume right. that. <laughs> I assume that the that, that's totally what Dario Fo looks like. I assume. It's okay. Th these will, for the most part, be easier than that. I would assume. Okay. All right. Remember, don't answer in the room because we'll have uh, our three contestants buzz in. Okay. Here's the first one. All right. Well, this is a great HBO show. Um, well, it's about this charged particle who's just climbed to the top of the corporate ladder, and it has everything it could possibly want, except uh, for an additional uh, proton at its core. Does anyone? Any fans of the show? Kate buzzed Kate, in. Kate, would you like to say what this show is about? Is that Success Ion? Yes, exactly. Success uh... Ion. Success Ion. That is, in fact, the name of the show. Congratulations. Okay. Next one. Well, this one, uh, we're taking real liberties with the uh, the L. Frank Baum canon here. On this one, um, Dorothy, uh, this hidden man, uh, cowardly lion, etc. Well, they're they're all trying to meet the wizard, but unfortunately, um, due to um, catastrophic oh, no. climate change, um, they all have to get there via a giant boat. I haven't seen any of these, but I know this one. Oh boy, I'm just going to casually maneuver over to the chat window. A couple of people have it, but uh, no buzzes yet. Oh, I'm sorry, Kate, did you... Oh, wait, no. I, I, I'm getting every single answer instantly. Laura has it. Boy, I think we might need a clue for our three uh, hmm. finalists. Really? Well, I really should have looked up where this show airs. I think it's on Netflix, right? I think it's a Netflix drama. Hmm. Um, I'll say it's I'm a sure it's, it's single word. Yes, yeah, it's a single word. I, I would say that it's a proper noun rather than a word. Mm -hmm. um, and do we have a number is... of letters, maybe? Yes. It's a five-letter title. Um, I, I think when they get it, it they're going to say, oh my gosh, that's so... Yes. Uh, but Kate, finally, we are, finally have a buzz from Kate. Kate, want to try this? Is that one Oz Ark? Yes, Oz Ark. 
you know, that's wow, the, the Wizard of Oz has fallen on really hard times. I guess, I guess he looks so sad. That's what happens when you lose all your cool special effects gizmos. All right. Oi, governor. Uh, I, <laughs> do, do you want me to do my... Uh, oh, do the oi. accent, yeah. Oh, yes, it's good. <laughs> oi, oi, bro. Harry and Meghan, they've gone mental. Like, you know, they've um, they've mailed a package of live alligators to Buckingham Palace. And, oh my gosh, uh, one of the gators has gone into the throne room and, uh, you know, taken a big chomp out of uh, Her Majesty's uh, leg. Oh, wow. What a, I wonder what this show's about. Uh, Patty and Amy, no? Ooh, this is a great Netflix drama. It was a, it was a big hit. Uh, very recently. Yeah. <laughs> it made you want to take up a uh, particular activity here. We got a buzz oh. from Paula. Paula, do you think you know what this is? Is that the Queen's Gambit? The Queen's Gam bit. <laughs> yeah, someone bit the Queen's Gam. And that and that's why, as you can see, if you look at the bottom, that's why uh, the Queen there, that's why she needs um, all those pit, those tranquilizers and um, the various alcohol bottles. <laughs> because of all the pain she's in. She's, they're, they're medically prescribed for um, leg damage. So Heather, what's our what, what's our point situation now? Two for Kate at the moment, and one for Paula. Okay. Oh boy, very fun. Right. Oh boy. Well, this one, you know, uh, this one. Well, where do I start? Well, there was this big movie uh, starring Ben Affleck that won Best Picture, but you know, this guy really hated it. So on this show, he just sort of watches the film, this this film starring Ben Affleck as a CIA guy. And uh, he starts just, like, screaming obscenities over um, the footage. It's just, it's all it is. It's kind of an underwhelming show, if I'm being honest <laughs> with you. Just, I, and, and the worst thing is, he can't even say real obscenities. He's just, uh, they have to be censored out. So you can only hear the very start of the um, what he's saying on this oh. show. Like the New York Times might just give you the first letter. Yes, they, they, they have to get rid of them. Um, some other letters. Yeah. Do you think that's a good picture idea? Is Ben Affleck? Do you, do you, do you, <laughs> I, I feel like the beard on this. I, I, I feel like the beard on him in this picture is more convincing than the beard in the actual movie. Um, <laughs> I, I think it the pictures are terrific. Okay. But we need a buzz. I'll also say, uh, if you guys are curious, this is also the name of a film. Um, not. This is a film that rhymes, in fact, with the film that's on screen right now. Okay. This is aired on. What channel is this? Buzz. Ooh. It's Kate's buzzing in. Kate, what do you have? Is that F Argo? Yeah, F Argo. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. F Argo. Yeah, I know. Did, did you like the film Argo? I, I was not a big fan. <laughs> a little overrated, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, in this one, oh man, this Hulu series, it's about a guy. It's very recent. It's about a guy who, uh, you know, he's really creeped out, really skeeved out by all these uh, not so bright people, all these dunces. Uh, you know, he, he's sort of like, he looks at them and he goes, uh, yeesh. He uh, goes, yeesh. Well, he doesn't go yeesh exactly, but I, I, we're, we're playing taboo rules here. I can't say what he's actually saying because I would give away. I answer. see. Yeah, I see. Well, it's one of those things that you learn to do when you make crosswords. You um, learn to use sort of synonym heavy language that no real human would ever use. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, this is a show on Hulu. Uh, it's based on a book, based on a non-fiction book. Yeah. Or, uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to say that this is an eight-letter title. Eight-letter, one word. Eight-letter, one word, although I suppose it's a compound word. Okay. Uh, drugs are involved, which I know does not narrow it. I, that really does very little to narrow down um, the world of prestige television, but... <laughs> There is some drug 
content in this. Not like hard drugs, you know, or hard drugs, I suppose. They're dangerous drugs, you know, opioids. They're, they'll screw you up. <laughs> Paula, Paula has buzzed in. Oh? Is that dope sick? Yeah, dopes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dopes. Oh, dopes. Okay. Okay. Now, oh boy. This show, it's on Netflix. It's a reality show about, um, you know, I suppose it's not really the cosmetics industry. And then, you know, they're, they're, people are, you know, putting extensions on their hands, but they're um, mm. modifying these hand extension things. You know, this is really tortured because I can't say what they are, but I mean, clearly you can tell what those are. You know, they're just mm -hmm. sort of trying to put them on the ends of their fingers on the on the back side of their hands so we're facing them on they're sort of a uh, customizing them so two words uh two word thing the first word is um exactly what you'd think looking at this photograph the second word is uh you know verb you know that you would see in crosswords a lot you know hmm. and i also i also think that you know um you, I think you would see the actual title of the show in Crossfords a lot the, as a clue for a word such as um, aced. I think that pops up quite often. Paula has, uh, is weighing in. Paula, do you think you know this one? Uh, nailed it. Well, actually, it's not, not quite. Nailed, well, I mean, it's nail edit, but yes. And you see, <laughs> oh, <but>. nail. <laughs> You know, they have to, yeah, that's a very, yeah, they have to, this person has to redo their nails, like, because the case is on all over them. Nail edit. Oh. Nail edit. Yeah, nail edit. They have to edit the nails. This wasn't forced at all. You know, exactly what the show's about. <laughs> all right. How, what's the, what's our point total now? That ties it up. Three Ooh. to Kate, three to Paula. Oh, okay. boy. All right. All right. Okay. Now. This show, you know, I think Disney Plus went way too far with this one. You know, <laughs> they're, it, it, it's a real statement show. They're really sticking it to uh, you know, the Marvel shows. They're really sticking it to DC with this one because they took a, they took a, the director of the film Aquaman and they just uh, put him on camera and they uh, sort of got a big saw, which is ironic because uh, James here, the director here, also directed the film Saw. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a joke. It's sort of an irony I just want to point out because I thought that was too clever to go un unpointed out. Well, yes, they, <laughs> they took James, uh, what's his face here, and they got uh, a big saw and they uh, sort of cut his body in half. He's been sliced in two, into two different portions on this show, on Disney+. Plus. It would help if you knew the first name of the, if you knew the last name of this guy who I depicted. Um... There's an actual person there. If there's an actual person. Yeah. Well, you know, this well, this show was very popular. Everyone seemed to like it. There's a... What was it? I think it's a title of 11 letters. Kate's Kate, buzzing. Uh, Kate. Is that Wand Division? It is, in fact, Wand Division. Yeah, Wand Oh! <laughs> Wand Division. Yeah, they kind of... I know, it was really brutal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, one. That's Three. terrific. Great. How many? How many more do we have? I believe we have three more, don't we? All right, let's get so like, close race. Oh boy, this is good. It's going to be fun. Into hard territory here. Out. Uh, inspired in equal parts by um, the documentary Free Solo and the popular series Jackass. This show is just <laughs> nonstop footage of people screaming after they um, stub their toes onto giant or not so giant uh, rock formations. They just, keep, they keep, just keep hitting their toes and they start screaming out. They start screaming, they start, you know. Well, they, they scream something very specific. Um, they say something hmm. to the extent of, they say something of, darn this large rock or not so large rock. Hmm. Mark, have you heard of the show that we're talking about? It, it, I, it airs I, on it airs on a very real network that apparently exists called Paramount. 
not Paramount Plus, Paramount, which is also a thing. Yeah. It airs on Paramount, which coincidentally also has a giant stone in its logo. Oh, ah, crap. Just <laughs> I should have said that. A giant, a giant, they have a giant well, mountain, I suppose, in the logo. A giant rock. Oh, okay. Paula, Paula buzzes in. Paula. Is that yell owl stone? Yellowstone. Oh, yell yeah. owl stone. Yes. <laughs> <the show. laughs> did, did you know that this show has five million weekly viewers? Did, did you know this? <laughs> I had I looked this up. This Kevin Costner has been on the show for like twelve years, and like I have what? never heard the show before. <laughs> like two days ago, is is is, huh. is the most is the biggest drama in America right now. And I have no idea what it is. <laughs> so what's our what's our score? All tied up, four and four to Kate and Paula. Oh boy, oh boy. And we have what? Two more? Did you say? There's two more. Oh, I should have made it. Two more. Oh boy. Yeah, you didn't go up, and even you didn't go with an odd number, but okay. Okay. Well, if you'd like, we could end with this one. This one has a great ending oh, to no. it, I suppose. Or we keep going. Well, <laughs> we'll this going. show. Yeah, be fair. Okay, this show is about the glamorous life of masseurs and masseuses. <laughs> I don't know. I, I actually don't know if masseuse is the um, girl version of the masseur, or I, I don't know if it's gendered. Maybe. Mas Allegra masseuse can help is me out. female, masseur is male. I oh, believe. it's real. Okay, that's awesome. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, in the in the high power world of massage, of massage rather, you know, there's some really big names in that field, and this show is about one of them. Uh, this masseur, masseuse. I can't tell the. I didn't bother. I suppose those are uh, little rest marks so let's say masseuse right. this masseuse you know she's really good at her job uh you can say that she's like kind of a star in the industry of uh giving massages particularly uh hmm. back massages she's really quite good at it she's um very famous for it she's on the cover of magazines that's that's a magazine cover behind her head all the paparazzi <laughs> they just lean in through a window and watch as she uh you know sort of gently caresses someone's back you know, this 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 is you know, this show is um rather old. I think it's the oldest one on the list from 2010. Uh, aired on AMC, I believe. It did not do so well, but it's of quite a bit of interest to puzzle enthusiasts for reasons I will uh, explain briefly. It's quite mm. very good. The most well, famous. Kate has Kate, Kate has a buzz. Yeah. Kate, you want to try for it? Is that rub icon? It is, in fact, Rub Ooh, Icon. God. Yes, this is, a, this is a real television show. I'm not making it up. <laughs> now, this show is of special interest to uh, puzzle enthusiasts because it is perhaps the only television show I'm aware of wherein um, a crossword puzzle kicks off the plot. Yes, there is, um, in this show, um, in the universe of the show, the main character discovers conspiracy theory because he sees the scientific name for the four-leaf clover uh, Marseille Quadrifolia in seven different mass market newspapers. Yes. Um, which, according mm. to the internet, represents an unknown fourth branch of the U.S. government. Wow, it's really, it's really good. And wow. here is here is that newspaper that that very legit looking crossword. Um, <laughs> that that's yeah, it's Marseille Quadrifolia at five down. You can see it's crossing two across. Very good. Big fan of, <laughs> I'm a big fan of all the numbers. Okay. I'm a big fan of all the numbers. I, I really like when I'm solving a puzzle and I see all these really great, <laughs> really avant-garde, lack of symmetry. This, this, this is great. probably just a, a quick shot, right? You know, you have to like freeze that to really I, see what's going on. This is this is a very right important there. part of the show. All right. We have all right. One. What's the what's the score when we and we go into our last question? Yep. Uh, Kate pulled ahead with that answer, five to four. Okay. Paula, five you're to four. To all right. Paula, 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 this is your last chance. <laughs> yeah, and Get we'll in. have to figure out a tiebreaker if uh, okay. we can do it. If you do. Okay. Now this one, okay. <laughs> this one is definitely a stretch. Okay, so you're all familiar with the popular film Ghostbusters, I assume. Well, this is sort of a Ghostbusters type situation about, well, there are these ghosts, but they're a bit weird and very eerie, but all they really do is they go around pluralizing words. They just turn words into their plurals. And a group of Ghostbusters, like uh, this person in the background here, well, they go around 
and um, they sort of, just, you know, they sort of uh, bust the ghosts. I, I think that's the terminology. And they get rid of all those pluralized endings to the words. So, uh, you know, when you are, when there's something weird in your neighborhood, uh, you call these these ghostbuster type people, and they go around to make sure that uh, whatever word you have will do the title of the show. And that's why the show's title blood is improbably. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, um, yeah, they, that, that, um, the word cat is now unpluralized. All those dogs? Nope. Dog. Uh, all those uh, mice? Uh, well, they can't help you if um, you know, the mice get uh, pluralized, I suppose. <laughs> but, so, this is a bit of a weird show for HBO to go so niche. You know, I, I would... <laughs> I, I can a bit of a niche show for HBO to, you know, this entire show based on pluralizing words and then unpluralizing them. <laughs> Uh, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense on, um, you know, mainline HBO. Maybe HBO Kids. Uh, perhaps the show could have aired on HBO Latino. I, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, you know, it would be, you know, just a language with more, um, you know, consistent pluralization rules. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, so this one. People the, have it, but nobody. Uh... I think this I, this might be the deepest cut of the bunch. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth is Elizabeth is wondering how long is it, is it one word? I would say that you know my phony enumeration is um three words. Mm. I don't know. I, I, Mark, I guess you've never seen this show. Um, I've never. Don't think I've seen. I don't have HBO. I, I don't know. I've, I've mean to get around to this one. It's uh, I, I mean I've seen all these shows per the explanation at the start of the segment, but I haven't yeah. really. I haven't actually seen this joke. So. No, okay, that's right. But you know it exists. It does exist. It's not it, is a, it is a real show. I did. I did not make yeah. this up. A real show. Yeah. Real show. Yeah. That Fred Armisen and you know a bunch of you know a couple of SNL oh. people are oh. in on the action. I see. Yes, you know it's a real show. I, I, I so I know the show. Okay, I know the show. I can't, what was the name of that? Um, yeah. Can you tell us the setting? Oh, it's set in an unspecified Latin American country. Yes. We're going to be the, all together. It's going to be 11 letters. We might just have to call time on this one. Yeah. Well, you know, on the plus side, we won't need a tiebreaker. Let's, well, give, it a, let's, give, let's give it about 15, 20 seconds. We'll, okay. We'll call it. What else can, what other clues are there? What other clues? Well, I would say that, you know, they're sort of, Taking off. Uh, oh, and Kate, Kate, Kate says she knows the show. Kate, do but you not, think? but doesn't know that she hasn't buzzed though because she hasn't been able to figure out what you're going for. Yes, well, you know, sort of taking off. Uh, you know, the last letter of some words, and that last letter is sort of eerie. I would say. I would say that that could be how you think of it. Oh boy. All right, I think uh, if we don't have a winner, if we don't have an answer, we'll have to. We have to call it. Tell here. us, yeah. I want you to tell us what the this one was. I guess I guess you guys aren't big fans of. Hold on. Lose spooky s. Right. Oh. <laughs> Lose. Any, any of you fans of the show? Lose spooky s. <laughs> spooky s. Yeah, that's, that, that, oh, that's, that's so that's that's terrible. That's, that's <laughs> spooky okay <laughs> well, all right well thank you so much that was that was that was fantastic the drawings were terrific uh you know the cat thing i'm not sure about the other drawings were all fantastic um that was so much fun and uh and so heather what's the final result the final is kate takes it yay kate kate kate, kate can you um all right, congratulations, Kate. These three books are coming to you. Um, we, we do ship uh, internationally, that's fine. And uh, and you'll get a, a mug and uh, both of our other um, finalists, Paula 
Um, we're going to send you a That Word Chat mug. Thank you so much for particip participating. And, uh, and Melissa. Was it Melissa was our third uh, finalist for uh, also for a mug. Thank you so much, everybody. That was a lot of fun. I know we went way, 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 way over. But um, I had a lot of fun. I didn't want to... Um, I didn't want to cut out any of it. I hope uh, we didn't uh, put, pu push too much into your evening plans, but um, thanks so much. That was a great time. Uh, thank you so much for our uh, word um, creators from the Incubator, Katya Brink, Allegra Cooney, Jess Goldstein, and Kiara Vasquez. Thank you to Laura Bronstein for talking to us about the Incubator. And uh, we'll be back. We're not going to do another show in a couple of weeks. We've got Christmas coming up. Enjoy your uh, holidays. Christmas, Hanukkah's over, but we got uh, Christmas coming and New Year's. And then uh, the new year, we've got the, the word of the, the American Dialect Society will choose this word of the years for 2021. Other dictionaries have already weighed in. We're going to have everybody. We're going to have a whole big international panel of lexicographers talking about the words that shaped 2021, and we're going to do that on January 11th, I believe. So um, please come back for that. So thanks very much, everybody.